We have really enjoyed cherry season this year. They have been so abundant, so sweet and juicy. Now that we have had our fresh cherries, it's time to preserve the rest. It's so easy to make cherry jam. You just start out by removing the pits and chopping them into whatever consistency that you like your jam to be. You can make it chunky, or you can take a blender, like this immersion blender, and chop it up a little bit more finely. When it comes to cherries, they don't have a lot of pectin in them. We personally don't use commercial pectin anymore because it has corn in it, and I'm sensitive to corn. So I like to use an apple. An apple has a lot of pectin in their skins and in the core, so we just take those parts and bundle them into a cheesecloth. You know, just tie it up and we're gonna let this sit in the jam mixture as it boils and all that pectin is going to come out of those skins and the core. And that is what's gonna help us to really get this jam to set. I love this jam pan. The handles stay cool to the touch and it has measurements on the inside of the pan to easily, easily measure your fruit out. I'm adding some organic cane sugar. Again, we really try to stay away from GMO products. Because I'm going to preserve this jam, I'm using some bottled lemon juice. If you're not going to preserve the jam, you can just use regular lemon juice, that's fine. While this jam cooks, you'll want to set up your water bath canner with enough water to cover your jars by one to two inches. And I put those jars in there to keep them warm while I'm boiling the jam because it's always a good idea to put hot jam into hot jars. So that's just gonna simmer while we cook the jam. As you can see, this starts out pretty liquidy and You'll want to boil this over a medium high to high heat. You want it to come to this rolling boil. This is a, a boil that can't be stirred down with a spoon. Now, once it gets to this point where it's really thick after about 20 to 25 minutes, you can go ahead and remove that bundle. And then I put a plate in the freezer and then you can scoop some of the jam onto the plate Put that back into the freezer for two minutes. And if you run your finger through the jam and it stays separated, it's done. If it goes back together, just cook your jam for a few more minutes. Now it's time to ladle up this jam. I'm using these weck jars. You can use regular ball jars. The recipe makes about four half pints of jam. I'm only gonna water bath two of these because I'm going to show you a couple of things that you can do with your jam besides put it on some toast. But for the jars that I'm going to water bath, I just want to make sure there's no bubbles. Measure the headspace. You want a quarter inch of headspace between the top of the jam and the top of the jar. I always like to wipe those rims off so there's no food residue between the lid and the jar, which can cause an improper seal. And then you're gonna to want to process these. Processing times are different for different elevations, so make sure to check your proper time. Now, with the jam that I have left, I'm just putting it in this larger jar because I'm gonna stick this in the fridge. It's good in the fridge for up to four weeks, so don't have to preserve it, but preserving jam is so easy. It's just a few more minutes that it's totally worth the time. So these have come out of the water bath canner. They're just gonna sit there for 12 to 24 hours. Then we'll check the seals, label them, and put them on the pantry shelf. Now let's make some chocolate cherry jam cookies. To a bowl, add some almond flour, tapioca starch, cocoa powder, some baking soda, salt, cream of tartar, and a little bit of sugar. 
Give that a good mix just to combine all those dry ingredients and then add your egg, some of your cherry jam, some melted butter and vanilla. So you're gonna wanna give this a really good stir. You're gonna wanna cover it up and then let it chill in the fridge for a couple of hours to firm up. Use a cookie scoop to portion this out onto a parchment lined baking sheet. Kind of press them down with your fingers a little bit and then you want to bake these for 15 minutes in a 350 degree preheated oven. Once they're done, just go ahead and put them onto a cooling rack and let them cool completely. Now that we have these delicious chocolate cherry cookies, let's make some ice cream with them. So we're not gonna use uh, sweetened condensed milk with this ice cream. Instead, we're gonna use some milk powder and you're gonna combine that with some water. Next, you are gonna add a little bit of cream of tartar to help stabilize the ice cream and some sugar and then some vanilla. And I like to kind of just give this a really quick mix and then add your heavy cream. So you're gonna to wanna to beat this with an electric mixer for several minutes and it's just gonna thicken up. It's not gonna have stiff peaks or anything. It's just going to be thick. Pour half of that into a freezer safe container and then take some of those chocolate cherry cookies and just kind of break them up and spread them all over that layer. And then once you have that down, you can put dollops of your cherry jam along with those cookies. Then you are going to take the rest of your cream mixture, pour it on top and spread it around just a little bit. And then again, add more of the cookies and more of your jam. So at this point, you just want to leave it like this. You want to put a cover on it and put it in the freezer for two hours. Once that two hours is up, then you take it out and just run a knife through the mixture to create that swirl. Cover it up and then put it back in the freezer until it is set, probably about four more hours. Then you can serve this up and as you can see, there's just swirls of cherry jam and chocolate cookies. So good. We really hoped you enjoyed this recipe for cherry jam and the other recipes that you can make with it. Thank you so much for stopping by and we'll see you in the next video.